Hey everyone and welcome to Healthy Movement for Runner's Knees Part 4. The knee lives between the hip pelvis and the ankle. So let's explore what that means. Stand up and stand comfortably and take a few steps forward and backward and go slowly enough to notice how the weight travels through your feet and ankles and particularly how the weight travels through your knees. Then turn yourself a little bit. Turn the other way. Turn and look behind you. And notice how the weight travels through your knees when you're in a turning motion. Now, Find a comfortable chair to sit in. A chair should be something like a dining room chair with a firm seat. And you're going to sit at the edge of the chair. All right, here we are in a chair. Sit at the front edge of the chair. And this is just a little bit of a physical illustration of the fact that the knee lives between the hip and the ankle. So I'm gonna ask you to put your feet on the floor and now, could you move your knee without moving either the hip or the ankle? <laughs> That's a silly thing to ask, because obviously you can't do that. If I were to move my knee in a little bit like this, out a little bit like that, obviously I'm moving my hip joint. Also, you'll, if your feet are on the floor, you'll feel that you're moving your foot a little bit too. Something's happening in your foot and the ankle. If I lift up like this, of course, I'm using my hip joint to lift my knee in space. So the knee can't do anything without help from the hip and pelvis area and the foot and ankle area. So that's a good starting point for us. All right, let's get out of the chair and come to a standing position again. The hip and pelvis act as a team with the knee. So take a step forward. You don't have to put weight on your front foot. But take a step forward with the right foot and back. And then step a little bit out to the right with the right foot. Again, to explore the movement of the hip here in conjunction with the ankle, you don't have to bear weight on the right foot. Just do these movements of exploration in different directions. And now you could actually take your right foot and place it 90 degrees to the position that you're standing in. And you're going to feel quite a bit of things, quite a bit of movement happening in your pelvis and hip joints. So play with that a little bit. Good. And you see that the knee is able to operate as a hinge joint due to its coordination with the hip and pelvis. The hip and pelvis coordinate the knee. In fact, the hip and pelvis actually initiate the movements of the knee. Okay, so you might even want to take a step backwards a little bit. Backwards, right? And then you might want to come out backwards and to the side a little bit and keep playing with these movements a little bit and you're going to feel an extraordinary amount of movement keep it comfortable of course and go slow an extraordinary amount of movement that occurs in the hip and pelvis to keep that knee joint safe and effective so the hip and pelvis are a team with the knee. Play around with these movements for several minutes and see if you can feel how that is so and then maybe you'll, you might even explore a little bit on the other side. Gently, gently. All right. Next, lie on the floor. That way you can remove the effort to stand 
in gravity and allow the floor to support you and see if you can refine your sense of how the hip, pelvis, knee, ankle, and foot work together. So, now you're lying on your back and let's bend the right knee. And now I'm going to ask you to lift the right side of your pelvis, but we're going to do it in a special way. You lift the right side of your pelvis by rolling your pelvis to the left as your right knee faces the ceiling throughout the movement. So you roll your pelvis to the left and then you slowly let the pelvis come back to rest on the floor. Knee stays pointing to the ceiling and then we'll continue to explore this movement. Lifting the pelvis, knee pointing to the ceiling, and we lift the pelvis by rolling the pelvis to the left. And what does that do in your spine? And then we slowly let the pelvis come back down to settle on the floor. Do the movement a number of times. And again, as when we're standing, we're feeling that movement of the hip joint and the pelvis, but the knee continues to face straight ahead, straight towards the ceiling. Straighten your right leg, bend your left knee, roll your pelvis to the right, keeping the left knee facing the ceiling. Slowly drop it back down. And what do you feel up here? What happens in the rest of your spine? Go back and forth. Do this movement slowly, easily, gently. A couple times on one side. A couple times on the other side. Slowly resting your pelvis back on the floor. Now bend both knees. Roll your pelvis to the left. Roll your pelvis to the right. Go a little farther with it. And now you've learned to slowly lower your pelvis back to the floor, allowing the floor to support you. So now we can do the movement a little smaller and a little bit faster, as if you're walking. Let the floor support you. Turn your attention to doing this as easily as possible and letting the floor support you throughout the whole movement. All right. Good. And then once again, we do it slowly to this side, knee pointing to the ceiling, slowly to this side. And you might even do a little bit of this. Notice what happens in the ribs. And then come back and rest.
All right, we're going to go ahead and come back to our standing position and we'll wrap this up. All right, we're back here in the standing position and now see what it feels like to take a step or two forward and to turn this way and turn that way. And what's different now? Can you sense any difference now that you've done a few movements with the hips and pelvis? All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did get any value out of the video, please click the like but button and go ahead and subscribe. It'll help us out a lot. And I will see you in the next video.